Janet said that when she was cast in that movie to play with you, that she was absolutely flabbergasted. Both that was exactly the way she was supposed to look. Is there a good story about that role? Uh, that it's such a it's not the kind of a role the kind of role that you were, were being asked to play. I did the uh, I was the journeyman at RKO. I did whatever you know came up. The only thing I can recall is when we, when we, they brought in Gordy Gebert, and uh, he sat on her lap, and they had to pry him away from her bosom. He was a little beyond his years, that kid. And Wendell Corey, the kid would just act up, you know, on a set. One of the back kind of knock him end over, and a run, step on one of his toys. You know. That was the kid that you brought the train to, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> That's very funny story. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about... It's true that you did everything that, that uh, you know, that RKO gave you to do, but when you would go out on loan to MGM, it seemed as though um, they, would, they would give you very different kinds of roles. Is that because at MGM they were a little flatter? They didn't want to do the exotic stuff that Howard Hughes did. Is that why you ended up playing? You know, for instance, the I think it was MGM that you played opposite Catherine Hepburn, right? Yeah. Wasn't that an MGM film? Yeah. And you described it as standing there while they wheeled the women stars through the set. That's what it says here. Well, um, what it says and what I said are two different things. All right. What do you say about that when you, uh, the role with Catherine? She was in a wheelchair. I was sitting there playing Brahms Fourth at the piano, and she they wheel her in, and uh, she was talking, changing all the lights, and I thought she was being a you know a bit uh, selfish, and she finally got all the lights straightened out, and she said, uh, "Mr. Mitchum, darling, don't let them mock you about like that." She was doing it for me. say no I they were always uh, very cooperative and it was sort of a 50-50 shot you know what was it like uh, you did a movie with Ava Gardner which was a rather strange movie where uh, there's a picture in here where you're wear wearing an apron you're very serious and what was she like to work with Ava was marvelous she'd uh, come to work uh, in the morning with deep circles under her. You know she's been out, you know, she just, all night long, but she looked absolutely gorgeous, you know. And uh, we hung a sign on her portable dressing room. We called her uh, Honest Abe, because she wore her own bosom. <laughs> but she was great. She was. Um, Howard Koch said she used to come late when she'd walk up behind you and apologize, you couldn't say no. That's right, yeah. He said that, uh, in his opinion, she was the most beautiful of all the stars. She was quite uh, captivating, yeah. Um, I know that you didn't hang out in the, in the Hollywood scene. We were just talking about how if you go through the old magazines, you don't see Bob Mitchum out on the town with this starlet or out on the town, you know. In other words, you didn't make it a 24-hour job. I mean, no, you did indeed. your job, but you didn't go at night for them also, right, to this party or that party to be photographed. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about what you were saying just before about 
the concept of being an actor versus being a star? Well, I uh, was never really bitten by the star bug. You know, I uh, uh, that's that's kind of uh, it's like finding a giraffe in the backyard. You know, you can touch it. You can say, hey, come look. You know, and uh, uh, I was a a journeyman actor. I I remember, I think it was Dory Sherry I, at RKO. So every time that they made a deal for Cary Grant or someone like that, the agent would throw in a script, you know, for $50,000, which was unworkable largely. And uh, they had a lot of that crap in the, in some they tried to amortize it. Well, that was my job. Dory said, everybody has got a crap salesman. Um, Warner's has Bogart, and Paramount has Alan Ladd. We got you, and we've got to get rid of all this. So I got felt to my lot, you know. We're talking about the uh, <coughs> film noir, you know, which for, for out of the past. Um, all the big productions had all the, the lamps, so we just lit the set with cigarettes, you know. Maybe I should have seen more of those movies. How about um, how about the difference in the in the actresses that were at RKO, like the the um, I'm just trying to think now, like the, the difference between a Jane Russell, for instance, and um, some of the more the Metro actresses. I mean, why were was that used like just wanting a certain kind of look over there? I would rather well of course Hughes was not there when I first went there and uh, Dory Sherry was yeah and I, I forget the uh, the hierarchy yeah, at that time yeah I remember there was one guy and he's mentioned in here right I don't uh, no I've, the only reason that I'm saying that asking you about that is that uh, Janet said that she never thought she'd ever get get away from Jet pilot with Wayne, right? It went on for years. Yeah. By the time it was released, the planes were out of That's right. Yeah, I've just been reading this book about Howard Hughes. So I just, I was wondering whether the, the act, whether you noticed the difference in the, in the, the actresses, the way they were treated, or the, whether there was a difference between the actresses at RKO and the actresses that were on the contract at MGM. Well, kind of Mr. Mayor's little girls, you know? Well, uh, I wouldn't call uh, Kate Hepburn or, or Greer Garson Mr. Mayor's Little Girl. That's true. And those are the ones that I worked with at MGM. 